Well, wow. Welcome to the show, John Guy Saves the World. <laughs> Once again, not quite sure what happened there. Sorry, John. Oh, uh, it, it is Wednesday night. Welcome to John Guy Saves the World in 30 minutes. I'm John Guy. And I'm Eli Racevich with Gracie the Wiener Dog. And we're going to open up tonight because tonight's show, well, come on. It wrote itself, but I've got a, a quote here that I want to open things with, and it goes as such. It is curious, curious that physical courage should be so common in the world and moral courage so rare. Mark Twain wrote that. And we are in a time, uh, quite obviously, in which there is, uh, to put it mildly, social unrest. Uh, Eli is, uh, is a police officer in Indianapolis. And uh, tell us about what it uh, has been like there this last week in Indy. Well, it depends on... Uh talking to someone that's been at ground zero or what the news reports uh, there were uh, and, and then and they made the feds made an arrest today there was a guy a few nights ago with a rifle uh, ak derivative just opening fire on the cops uh, never made the news you know nothing about it well last last night uh five police officers were shot five one is in critical condition and uh, is not expected to live. Five cops were shot. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't want anyone hurt, John. I don't want protesters hurt. I don't even want the rioters hurt. I just want them to stop tearing up people who didn't do anything's stuff. And I, and I hear all these people, well, you don't understand. You know, well, yeah, I actually, I do understand. Uh, as you know, John, I, uh, I'm of mixed blood. Uh, 45% of my immediate family are not white, so I do know. Uh, but I just, I just don't understand. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the businesses that are being destroyed downtown Indy are black owned. I, I, how the hell is that solving anything? Right. And here's the thing. And this is the paradox of it all. As citizens, as humans, we want protection. Everybody wants protection. Whether you get it from a police officer, a gun, it doesn't matter. We are after self-protection. So, if we're protesting and yet we are yearning for protection, what seems to be the problem? Uh, you don't like the police? Okay, fine. Uh, disband the entire police. Have no police, have no protection. See what happens. Yeah, I, 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 I'll give you a perspective on that. Um, a lot of these people that I've seen that are allegedly friends on my social media are uh, very sympathetic to the destruction. And I've uh, sent a couple of them a message. Hey, send me your address because I'm really not happy with the way the United States treated my Indian ancestors or Serbia in the 90s under President Clinton. So I'm going to come over and tear up your shit and you'll be OK with that. None of them's taken me up on it. And I, of course, got the racist thing dropped. I'm like, uh, you realize I'm not all white. So I, therefore, I can't be a racist. Well, anybody can be a racist. Of course they can, John. That's, but, that's the thing. You know, yeah. this, this whole concept of, I mean, five police officers were shot last night. You know. And, and here's my thing, That's John. There is believable. When I grew up in the 50s and 60s, there is no doubt that black people have been historically pooped on, mistreated, held out of things. You know, every now and then I get into discussion about uh, 
with some uh, people about the NFL and their uh, steps to promote minority hi hiring in the front office and in coaching positions. And I, I hear this, well, oh, they should do the same thing uh, at cornerback or running back. You have to have, uh, you know, so I said, no, no, you don't understand. For 50 years, the NFL blocked black players and had a quota. I said, so it, so that you're talking about two different sets of, of uh, uh, circumstances here. Plus, yeah. you and I both know we've been around professional athletes and college level athletes. A coach doesn't care what color you are uh, now if the best guy is going to play. So if you want to beat the black athletes out, then be better than the black athlete. That's my take on that. Well, and we grew up in Indianapolis and I went. I had season tickets to the Indianapolis Capitals who ended up winning the Continental Football League with King Cochran. Uh-huh. They had King Cochran. No, no, no. We had Johnny Walton in Indy. Oh, okay. I and played with uh, John Walton briefly. Johnny Walton uh, was a black quarterback. And he ended up playing in the World Football League, the U.S. Football League. Oh, my God. The NFL. He played everywhere because he was good. Because he earned his way. Just like any football player, you know. Um, my, my problem, though, is we want security. But we don't want the police. So I'm trying to figure out just what exactly is left. Well, well, I'm from West Virginia, so and you know what that means. So I could pretty much take care of myself. However, many of my neighbors and friends, they can't. You know, I, I said and I tell people, I said, we get between 4,000 and 4,500 runs a day here in Indianapolis. And I swear, John, 80% of them are stupid stuff that it, people can't solve their own problems. You, uh, a customer wanting us to make a store uh, owner or a worker, give them their money back. Uh, my neighbor cut his grass and his clippings are on my uh, sidewalk. You know, obviously, most people, based on that perspective, the majority of our runs, can't run their own lives. So who's going to do it for them? That's right. That's right. And so we're going to go out and protest the police. And they're the only ones that's, you know, protecting grandma. Well, let me get this out before we go any further, John. Okay. I know of absolutely no one who would support what those uh, cops did up in Minnesota. I, Peggy was asking me about it right after it happened. And I said, I've been a trainer for 28 years. And we've been discussing asphyxial, uh, positional asphyxiation for the last 25 years. In the, and I, I explained to her what the red zones are. You don't touch those unless it's lethal force, unless you, you have a reason to have to kill them. And, uh, you know, there, there's no reason to press on that guy's neck. And you, if you press on a neck, you're trying to injure them. You know, you, I'm sure when... Uh, uh, you first got started, there were some old timers still wanting to do the sleeper hold. Well, fortunately, that's gone. <laughs> well, I would go into work, Eli, and they would be uh, pushing a gurney past me. And um, because Maricopa County, Arizona, under Sheriff Joe Arpaio, we had lots of fatalities. We had uh, we had people who, in restraints, would choke to death. Um, I mean, it just we had unfortunately way too many deaths in the Maricopa County jail system. And um, I mean, I, I would go and I would have to interview people in beekeeper suits that were, you know, four pointed on a bed, on a, on a bunk, you know? Um, and 
there have to be some ethical guidelines put in place by police departments so that inmates or arrestees do not die. Absolutely. You know, one thing I've been reading is uh, a lot of people are saying uh, the privatized jails. And I'm like, that is a disaster. That's been a disaster here in Indianapolis. Because. Which, uh, which jail? Privatizing the, our jail oh, system. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That, 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 that is just a recipe for disaster. We've had stuff here in the privatized jails that's just beyond belief. And, well, uh, yeah. I live in Pinal County, Arizona. Pinal County, Arizona has 10, count them, 10 prisons in one county. We have 10 prisons. And the majority are privately run. Uh, Correctional Corporation of America, CCA, uh, is a big one. And the problem is that we're desperate for correctional officers in Arizona, but the private prisons, they don't really send you through an academy. You don't go through a boot camp necessarily. You know, it's it's on the job training in a lot of situations. I had to go through uh, a boot camp in Wisconsin uh, for the Department of Corrections up there, and uh, it was rigorous. It was rigor. It was it was sort of a a step above military basic training. You didn't do enough push-ups, you got washed out. Just that simple. You couldn't march in uh, in formation with everybody else. You got kicked out. It was that simple. Every single person in my graduating class, and this was 20, 25 years ago, every single one of us had a college degree. I don't know. Maybe that's the, uh, maybe that should be the criteria, but, you know, I had to go away for, I don't know, four to six weeks. What kind of academy do you have there in Indiana? I had to go as a, uh, I was one of the oldest. I, matter of fact, I was the oldest guy in my class. So I had to, uh, the second time I went, uh, I had to live in a room, and I was the littlest guy in the room, three of us in the size of a Holiday Inn uh, room, the old school ones, okay. and uh, lived there for uh, four months, John. Got to come home on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, I'm, you know, I didn't, you know, didn't get to see my kids, didn't go to their ball games. It sucked, but, you know, it, it was part of it. That's right. Uh, I think one thing that... Uh, at least uh, IMPD is doing it right now, is they are really, really, really working hard, even the going to other states to recruit uh, minority and women officers. Uh, I think well, that will help a lot. Uh, it's something that's needed. And I'll yeah. tell you something else that's, that's needed. Now, you sh- probably shouldn't go here, but I will. When I got hired, I was a sheriff. Uh, you being familiar with Indianapolis know that sure. the old city limits were Indianapolis police and everything outside that was the uh, sheriff's department. Right. What I liked about working for the sheriff's department was my boss got elected. If he didn't do what the citizens liked, he was out of a job in four years. Yeah. Uh, I think the sheriff was uh, back in those days was uh, much more responsive to the immediate wants and needs of the public and uh, i have to say marion county sheriff the last sheriff probably i will say uh was the uh, for, uh the first black sheriff and i worked for him okay and uh, sheriff mm-hmm. anderson did a lot of things i didn't like like sell us out <laughs> for the merger but he also did a lot of good things uh, he improved a lot of prisoners 
and did, worked hard on the reaching out to the black com community. Now, I work now for a department since the merger where uh, the chief is appointed. Now, I'm going to tell you, the chief we have right now, I did not think he was going to be a good chief. He's fairly new, uh, but been in the department forever. And I thought, yeah, I don't know about this guy. But the job he's done is utterly fantastic. Uh, stepped in a bucket of poop from our previous uh, mayor and a uh, couple of chiefs, but this guy's good. He's doing the right things. And I hate to see him end up with a, a lot of this in his plate because, you know, I'm now firmly convinced he's the right man for the job for right now's times. Yeah. I think a lot of, uh, and not just police, city and county and local government, we're still living in that 70s and 80s model, John. We've got to get into the 21st century. Well, and of course, I work for the sheriff's office out here in Arizona. And most people who follow the news knew my boss. Of course, nationally. Uh, nationally, yes. And... He's cost the taxpayers untold millions and millions of dollars, um, which as a sheriff, you really, I think, don't want to do. But um, he's one of these Donald Trump individuals that has the mindset of our president that uh, you come down hard, damn it. If you're a convicted felon or whatever, if you're serving time in his jail, well, he wants you to suffer. So and, uh, yeah, he wanted the 40s, 30s, 40s and 50s model prisons. Yes. Yeah, and that's why in Maricopa County, you have black and white striped outfits, pink underwear, chain gangs. I mean, the very first time I saw female inmates in black and white stripes working on a chain gang, um, I was stunned because I'd seen chain gangs in the South previously but I never saw a female chain gang. And uh, it's kind of warm out here where I live. And to have people eight or 12 living in a tent uh, outside in this kind of uh, oppressive heat, uh, you got to wonder if that's the correct way to handle the situation. Do we need to just reform? Is it a question of reforming police departments? I'm going to say yes, John, and I'm not throwing departments under the bus. But as I state, one of the things, and I'm an old guy, and, and most people uh, know me, know I'm, I'm fairly liberal on social issues. But I do think uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, pro-defending the country, and I'm uh, very uh, I, I, adamant about uh, protecting our communities. You know, it's, it's like uh, uh, prison, don't get me wrong, and jail should be punishment. But, and you know, even better than I do working in corrections, it's the same people constantly coming in. Yep. Let's do something to stop that. It's far cheaper to stop the cycle than it is to repeat the cycle. I, I voted for Mayor Hogshead twice. I'm, I, and uh, I, I think he's done a lot of good things. I think he's been incredibly weak in the strife downtown right now. As a matter of fact, I've never even seen him out in it. Uh, I can tell you, you remember Bill Hudnut. I guarantee oh, you sure. Bill Hudnut would have been out in it. Sure. I am a little disappointed in the mayor. Uh, like I say, I uh, I voted for him twice. Uh, he's a former federal prosecutor. I thought he was the guy for the job. And I, I'm not going to throw him out with the wash water right now. 
but he has done some good things. He's tried to get us a new justice center. He's got program rehab programs, uh, low level, multiple, uh, uh, drug, effu- uh, uh, drug usage people arrest. He's tried to get education and hospitalization for those people because it is truly cheaper to try to turn someone's life around than to incarcerate them. You and I know that from a dollar and cents point, it's incredibly expensive to incarcerate people. Well, people used to, at the sheriff's office, they would look at me and they'd go, well, you don't believe in capital punishment. You're, you're a flaming liberal. And I'd go, well, no, actually I am an ultra conservative when it comes to capital punishment. I don't feel that the Charlie Mansons of the world deserve free representation all the way to the United States Supreme Court, number one. Number two, they get their own private cell. It costs millions to house someone on death row. Yes, literally for each individual. Literally, and I don't get it. And and I, I would look at my coworkers and I'd go, I don't agree with that. I don't agree that they should get special Uh, representation, special conditions, because they're on death row. That just doesn't make sense to me. Well, one of my solutions, one of the other problems, I think it was uh, Corona-19, was in uh, building uh, Escape from New York. I, I personally would give the prisoner the option Do you want to go to this place where you have your own society? No one's coming in and no one's coming out. And that includes help from the outside. Do you want to go there or do you want to be, you know, do you want to go to the death penalty? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, when I say no one goes in, I mean, no, no, once the facility's built, you know, then we're done with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, What happened in Minneapolis was a tragedy. What happened in Louisville, Kentucky was a tragedy. Um, I still haven't figured that one out. We we have a multitude of tragedies, and they continuously pop up. You know, uh, one of the things, I, I've, I've been a trainer for 28 years, John, and one of the things I, they all get my speech the first day in the car, you know, once they're out, out of the academy, out of the schooling, when they first, first day in my car, is I give them my pitch about, uh, uh, long story short, it's about a 20 to 25 minute spiel, so I'll condense it. Basically, if I ever even think you're being racist I will do everything I can to wash you out. And I've, you know, I, you know, this is not a source of pride for me, but a fact to tell you where it's coming from. I got a sheriff fired because he told an, a recruit to write black people two tickets and I caught wind of it. And I also had a uh, uh, officer for the department uh, I work for now. I started the investigation into him from stealing uh, from Spanish speakers. And he's, at, he's currently in prison. So I took the heart. Uh, I, I, I became a policeman older than most people. And uh, the, one of the reasons I be so hell-bent on being a policeman was uh, when I was young, I was a re- I, I'm walking down the street and a group of people run past me. And this uh, Southport police officer pulls up, tells me to get in the car. And I'm like, for what? He goes, because you're under arrest. I said, no, I'm not. I'm just walking down the street here, not... And my dad was a policeman. Several of my uncles were. So, I, you know, I don't think anything about talking to cops. He gets out and, uh, you know, literally hits me as soon as he gets out of the car. Uh, ends up uh, pulling a, a three fifty seven back in those days. Sticks it in my chest. Now, I had hair past my shoulders, probably getting close to my elbow, a beard. I looked like uh, what was uh, in that era. Thought, you know, that 
hippie commie loser. Uh, he did a bunch of other things that are illegal for about an hour. And uh, I, the thing I remember most was the Marion County sheriffs that got there to help him with his alleged resistor. They got in an argument. I thought they were going to fight. I'm in the back of the car handcuffed and I can hear them tell him this guy obviously didn't do anything. Unarrest him. Let him go. He, he was bound and determined he wasn't. Uh, some other things he did. He drove me to his house, left me in the car unattended, went out and got a sandwich, uh, et cetera. So anyway, I get down to jail. Everybody treats me. The guys down there are like, dude, you're, you're not drunk. I said, yeah, I know. And uh, But anyway, uh, before uh, I got my court date, and the prosecutor comes over to me and says everything, you know, because the sheriffs were on the subpoena list. He, I see him talking to them. They come over and, hey, he's like, everything's dropped. You know, I'm sure they told him the truth. So, I, you know, my thought, John, was I'm going to make sure that never happens to anyone else again the rest of my life. And that is one of the driving forces uh, why I am a policeman, because uh, I, I believe in uh, I believe in treating everybody the same. Uh, I don't care. I, I, I'm going to go, you know, I'm Eastern Orthodox, John, Serbian, no less. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and, you know, there's a, there's a history there with the Bosnian Muslims and Serbians. Let's face it. Well, I'm going to go yeah. have dinner at one of my best friends house Saturday. Who's a Sunni Muslim, you know? So I don't want to hear what you are called uh, is why you the like you are. No, you are what you are because you've chosen to take that path. Right. And you know, it comes it comes down to integrity. It does, John. And that I think if we want to solve this problem in 30 minutes, we need to be pushing integrity uh, to not just the police officers. No, no, no. The protesters too. Well, we're finally going to get body cams late this year and uh, next year. So I, I'm really excited about that. I was one of the test pilot officers, and I loved having it. People would be showing their, you know, what's off till I walk yeah. up. I wore mine on my rim on my glasses. You couldn't hardly see it. I used the little Bluetooth attachment. And, man, the minute people realized that I had the camera on, you would not believe the behavioral changes. Yes. Uh, and it, it protects the public, and it protects the officers. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. They're talking fourteen million a year just for storage. Wow. Yeah, that fourteen million's got to come from somewhere. Well, we basically, I think, we've nailed the problem at least. I think that uh, both sides are out of control. Both sides need to do a a reality check. And um, they need to start thinking about their own integrity. Well, John, you were at, uh, somebody was asking me one day about uh, these virtual concerts and bringing these dead rock stars back. I got a better idea. Let's bring John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, and Martin Luther King back and put them in charge of the damn country. There you go. All right. Holograms, you betcha. That's going to wrap up this Wednesday edition of John Guy Saves the World in 30 Minutes. And we want to thank you for joining us either live or on a recording, uh, both of you. Until next Wednesday, I'm John Guy. And I'm Eli Racevich with Gracie the Wiener Dog. And we wish you stay safe. Please stay out of these protests. And uh, the next time you see a police officer, shake his hand. Well, protest all you want. Just don't tear up stuff and steal That's and rob. Right. All right. And don't bring a gun to the protest. Yeah. Until next Wednesday. Bye-bye now. See you guys. See you, Brick. <laughs>